Choose the convenience of Neighbors Express and get friendly, courteous service every time you visit any of our convenient locations. Fill up with pay at the pump and take advantage of our bigger and better selection of beverages and tobacco products. And buy 12 packs of Pepsi products, two for $6.99. Enjoy the popular crushed ice with your favorite fountain drink. Also enjoy a fresh hot breakfast. Stop by for lunch or dinner. It's always fresh, always convenient at Neighbors Express. Now located on Central Drive at East Dublin at I-16 and 441 and in Cedar Grove, providing farm fuel for all our customers. Count on the convenience of Neighbors Express. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the East Lawrence Falcons Coaches Show. I'm your host, Scott Davenport, and it's my pleasure to be here once again. Glad to be here. <laughs> with Coach Gene Mulkey. <laughs> now, Coach, uh, we had uh, a change of plans for uh, the game uh, against uh, uh, Screven. You had to right. move it up a day uh, yeah. because of, you know, what earlier in the week was threatening to be rain basically for three solid days. So, right. Uh, uh, why, why don't we just go over, because it was, you know, one exciting ball game. Uh, hey, um, I think it, and I think um, several people agree on this, but I think that's probably one of the um, most exciting baseball games that, that we've had this year. Um, it's one of the most exciting baseball games that I think I've been a part of in a while. Um, it just, you know, we moved it up a day. It was supposed to rain today, and... You know, anytime you go to doing that, you hope it. You know, you hope it works out. I mean, you kids plan to play on a certain day, and then you move it. You never know how they're going to react. Um, we had the county track meet going on yesterday mm -hmm. at, the, at the complex, also. So you know, there was a there was a lot going on, and you're always concerned about you know moving it to a day like that because you don't know how the kids are going to be, how they're going to be focused, what they're going to be paying attention to, or whatever. But but they um. We moved it, and they did an exceptional job. Um, we uh, we had a we had a big day, and a, a really big win for for our program, and a really big win for our for our kids yesterday. It was just a just a great day. Well, why don't we just go through some of the things? I know just as a you know very interested <laughs> bystander. Right. Uh, one of the things that really impressed me was just the speed of the game and how well it was played by both teams. Uh, yeah, it, it was a well-played game. You know, we kind of, we um, we started off, uh, we had an error in the first inning and, a, um, you know, a guy reached in the first inning and we had, a, we had an error at third base, but, you know, errors happen. People make mm -hmm. them and that, that's just, that's part of the game and, and, um, then we we had an error at second base. We had an error at third base the second inning, but um, and that was Bryson Edge over there. But um, he had a couple of boo boos over there to begin with. But from from that Come point on, to the end of the game, they uh, they worked on him pretty hard over there. And I think yeah. he he had four or five putouts that he mm -hmm. you know he did a, a really good job on. And and um, you know we we pretty well played airless the you know the re the rest of the game. Um, I thought a great play also made by uh, uh, Colby Owens at, right. at short where, uh, you know, he, he had to go a long way, was laid out, and there was no way possible he had the time to make the play, right. trying to get to his feet, so threw right. it that was from a, his backside. <laughs> that, that was a big play, um, you know, and it, 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 it helped out tremendously. And, you know, defensively, we, you know, we played pretty good. Um, freshman behind the plate still um, he threw a, he threw another runner out yesterday and that mm -hmm. was big and you know all across the um, the field you know we pl we played pretty solid on the defense and um, you know made some big plays like a lot a lot of plays at third the play at short with Colby um, you know had various plays throughout the infield that, that we did a that we did a good job on um, the, the run that they scored on the guy reached on an error and he scored in a we had we had the guy in a rundown between third right. base and home and um I wasn't real sure that the correct call was made, but that's wow. you know, that's that's baseball. 
Yeah. But um, you know, we had a we had an interference call on a rundown on our part, which allowed that run to score. And um, but you know, we just we were never we were never out of the game. Yeah. Um, from from the first pitch to the to the last base hit, um, our kids were. They were in the game. They were focused. They were paying attention to what's going on. Um, you know, they hustled. Their attitudes were good, um, and you know that's uh, that's a big part of winning baseball games is is staying focused and keeping a positive attitude. And the big thing that I talked to the kids about before this game was is we played a game <clears throat> Monday at Wheeler. We actually got beat seven to two, but. The guys had a lot of fun, and you know, at, at at no time were we ever out of that game. You know, we stayed focused, we kept working, mm -hmm. we just we didn't take care of business at the plate. And I told them before the game yesterday, if we can go out tonight and have the fun playing baseball that we had against Wheeler, and just hit the baseball and play mm -hmm. defense, I said we'll we'll win the baseball game. And you know, it was a it was a battle. It was a battle the whole game. We had a couple of base running um, mistakes that I was really afraid was going to really going to cost us. Um, but they, you know, we stayed in the game. They kept battling and and um, ended up ended up having a really really big seventh inning to win mm -hmm. the ball game. I know. Uh, I thought Gavin pitched a great game. Uh, the kid from Screven. I mean, he was he was in the whole whole time. I, right. I thought they both you know pretty evenly matched as far as you know pitching was concerned. It was one of those things where you know when it came down to that final, you know, like you mentioned, really big seventh inning where things sort right. of fell into place and kids right. produced. The you know? um, the pitching was the pitching was great on both sides. Um, I really liked the guy that they threw. Um, I don't like him as good as the guy that we threw. Threw, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, Gavin's a sophomore, and um, he just he had it. Yeah. And uh, he did a great job. Um, you know, his pitch count was not high. He th he threw the entire game, and he just I told him after the game I said you probably just threw the best game of your life, and and his response is I'm ready to throw another one. I said well good because you get doubling next week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, he was kind of jacked, um, the team was jacked, and, you know, any time that you get that kind of pitching performance, you know, you hope that on the offensive side of the ball that kids are going to take care of business because he's doing his part. Right. And, um, and you know, we, we ended up doing that in the seventh inning. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to come back and talk about that seventh inning right. after our, our first break, and folks, the people that make this show possible are the ones that you're about to see uh, the commercials for, and we'd like to ask that you please honor them with your business. Hi, I'm Brian Millett with Game On Training. Now thanks to Game On Training in Dublin, you can train at a first-rate facility. With over 16,000 square feet of training space, Game On features the right equipment and a knowledgeable staff giving serious athletes and recreational players everything they need to take their game to the next level. Game On offers individual and team packages. Monthly memberships are available and one-on-one -on -one lessons for ages 7 and up. Game On members have access to train 24-7, so don't miss out. Call or come by for the latest information and schedules. And remember, use your Game On and Game On! Game On also offers CrossFit DGA with owner Eric Bland. Get the best workout you've ever had with Eric and his staff. Join Game On's training today for excellent core strength and conditioning. And get your game on. And we're back with the coaches show. Now, when we left you, we were just about to start talking about the seventh inning, and it was one of those things where, uh, you know, coming into that seventh <clears throat> inning, you know, evenly matched. We had, you know, Scriven County up by one. Uh, we get them out uh, with the... Uh, you know, thankfully, them not getting an insurance run right. or two. And uh, so why don't you describe the attitude of the guys going up to the, the, the um, plate in the seventh inning? We, uh, you know, like I said a while ago, I mean, we, we had hit the ball a little bit 
Um, you know, all throughout the game, we had mm -hmm. we had a couple of real hard hit balls that went directly at people that that uh that seemed to have been the case all year for us in times. But um, you know, going into the seventh inning, seventh inning, we were um just really focused. You know, the kids were. You know, I, I told them when we, when they come off the field and we meet, you know, um, it's no secret what I tell them. I tell them that little round thing. We got to hit it where they're not standing. <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, it's kind of we did we did something in the seventh inning that that um, we haven't done all year long. Um, we had four hits back to back mm -hmm. in the, in the seventh inning. Um, Austin, I think Austin Scott led off and. He hit a really hard ground ball up the middle, um, which uh, actually hit the pitcher. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had a we had a a run of young guys to come to the plate. Um, Seth Newsom had a hit during that inning. Kyler Morris had a hit during that inning. Um, Gavin Donaldson had a hit during that inning. Um, all sophomores that they all stepped up to the plate. They all got a hit. Um, uh, Gavin Donaldson had a had a hit to tie it up. I think that is correct. Um, and then we end up with Kyler Morris on on third base and with a senior at the plate. And you know, through back and forth, you know, trying to decide what to do, I was in a situation to where, you know, we had one out. Am I going to squeeze or am I going to hit it? Um, mm -hmm. Which Connor at the plate, he's a good bunter, and you know, he he can get a bunt down pretty much whenever we need it. And then I get to thinking, well, you know, we're we're sitting here in a situation where we got one out, and I got a senior at the plate that has a very good on base percentage. He probably leads the league in getting hit by pitches. I, I just fix it to say he will, um, he will he's but, not afraid you know, to get hit he, by pitch. He if, he really really battles at the plate, and and at this point in time right now, if there's one person I could pick to have at the plate. Mm -hmm. In that situation, it would be Connor. So I just told him, I said, you know, we talked about bunting, we talked about squeezing, and I just finally told him, I said, all right, you're a senior. You got a chance to win it right now. I said, go over and hit it. So, mm -hmm. you know, he goes to the plate. Um, he gets opposite field base hit, and uh, just a just a great, you know, just a great inning. Um, we got in the right there, cloak right there in the seventh inning. We had runners on uh, second and third, and they walked our number nine batters, Cam Oliver, mm -hmm. and they walked Cam to to load the bases to put a double play in order. Right, and you know when they walked him, um, you know on one side I'm like, oh Lord, now they can turn a double play, you know, and then on the other side that I was means. like. Great. Now we're loaded, and we got the leadoff batter. Right. You know, so, and uh, you know, know, one, so of, we, one of the things you know, a lot, a lot of us talk, you know, talked about this earlier. You know, the folks that were there, how, yeah, you sit there and think about that double play, but also that takes away that cushion from that pitcher right. too. And all of a sudden, now if I make a mistake, if there's a pass ball, someone scores. Right. And instead of okay, if I hit a guy, all right, it, it's not that big. And that, that's what, that's when Gavin gets the hit to tie it. Right. Up. And, and uh, uh, you, you know, can tell the, the guys were really jacked up after oh yeah, that. Oh, yeah, were, they were really excited. I think you know, everyone, because, you know, there was time called, I think everyone oh, yeah. came out and, and congratulated him for that. It was uh, very exciting, you know, yeah. and, and, and Connor, um, you know, he, he, he came worked, through. He, he yeah. works hard and, you know, yeah. put a senior in that spot and he comes through and he gets a base hit to win it. And, and uh, that, um, that's real big for real big for our guys and uh, real big for the program because that that puts us back at four and four in region play and it's a you know it's a very big win for you know trying to trying to earn a spot in the top mm -hmm. four for the playoffs which we've got some tough ones coming up that um you know we've got to we've got to do the same thing we've got to go to the field we've got to be focused we got to be ready to go and. Uh, you know, we took care of business in that one, and that was great, and we love it. But, you know, we got to go back to the field today, go back to practice, and get ready for Swainsboro on Tuesday because, you know, we got two region games next week, and it would be, you know. And, well, be, we can get in, into more of oh, that okay. after, the, uh, after the break here in just a minute. But right. uh, 
you know, like you said, though, big seventh inning, and it's it's one of those things where it's a lot better when you come out on the good end of something that like that true. as opposed to the the other <laughs> the other that end of true. it. Because I imagine that that kind of makes for a long ride of second guessing, you know, when true. when that happens. That's right. And I don't think anyone's probably tougher on themselves than a coach, you know, after you know something happens where it was that close. Well, if you make the right decision. You're a hero. Great. You make the wrong decision. Yep. Not so good. Yep. But All right. Well, folks, we're up against another break. We'd like to ask that you please honor these sponsors and make this show possible. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay, wire feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and tie the fleece, and strain the milk. Somebody who'd bail a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing. Who would laugh, and then sigh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. And we're back with the East Lawrence Falcons Coaches Show. Now, Coach, you know, coming up this week, I think it's probably uh, every baseball and soccer coach's nightmare. Next week is you've got spring break, and you've got to, you know, be able to conduct practices and games during spring break, trying to keep kids focused. And uh, why don't you go into a little bit about what's coming up uh, for you next week. All right. Um, next week, like Mr. Davenport said, we're on spring break. Um, we have two two really big games next week. Um, both of those will be at home here at East Lawrence. Both of those games will take place at 5.30. Um, next week's kind of, it's kind of a tough week, um, you know, to have big baseball games during spring break and you know, when we schedule games and we meet for the region and everything, we try to, with the date that we can start and the date that we have to be through playing baseball, we, you know, we've tried to figure out how not to have to have big games on spring break, but that's, um, we've always played on spring break. Um, mm -hmm. When I was in college, we played baseball on spring break. But, um, you know, it's a, it's definitely a challenge um, to try to, you know, keep them focused because they're they're thinking about going and doing things, and and, and that's that's normal. But we got um, we got two big ones that we've got to work real hard at staying focused on. Um, Tuesday we play Swainsboro here at 5:30. Uh, we beat Swainsboro there um, on the road at the beginning of the year, and um, I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to see their number one uh, this round. Um, which is the Wiley kid, which is which is a really good pitcher, um, but you know our job is is to do what we do, take care of business, and you know stay in the game like we did against Screven and, and see what happens. And the second game of next week is is the Dublin game, which is also here. It is normally scheduled on the schedule. It's scheduled for Friday, but we've moved that game up to Wednesday, so we'll. We'll practice today, tomorrow. We'll hit Sunday. We'll practice Monday. Um, we'll play Tuesday. We'll play Wednesday. So, um, mm -hmm. there'll be any practice time in between those two region games, which I really like to have practice 
in between two big games, but we're going to play them back to back and and um, see what happens. And you know, which we don't really concern ourselves with the Dublin game yet. We got to yeah, you know focus on Swainsboro first. Yeah. Um, and you know, it would be another big win. Uh, both us and Swainsboro need wins right now, and um, you know they'll be coming in here trying to do everything they can to get a region win and, and we'll be defending our turf trying to get another region win, you know, to help us out in, the, in a spot for the playoffs. Now, after uh, spring break, uh, we come back, you know, hopefully, you know, <laughs> as teachers, we come back a little bit refreshed. Yeah. But uh, we got, uh, you know, another big week coming up right we after do. that. Uh, we do. I mean, th this is one probably, you know, as far as big games go, the next couple of weeks, stacked one right after the right. other. We, um, two games, two games over spring break, two big region games over spring break, and then um, we'll give the kids a little bit of, a little bit of time, a uh, couple of days to, you know, um, do a little bit of stuff, then we'll come back and we'll go right back to work. And then next week, the week after spring break, um, we have three baseball games. We actually have two big region games and we have a, a, a game against Trutland. On Tuesday, we play Metter, which that game will be away. Um, Wednesday, we play Trutland. That game is away. And then Friday, we go to Jefferson County. Um, that game's away also. So, you know, within the next two weeks, we've got four region, four region baseball games that are going to, you know, be the telltale sign to where you know, if we're going to make the playoffs, which spot we're going to make the playoff in. And um, it's just a, you know, getting kids, spring break's one thing, the week after spring break is another. Um, and, uh, you know, Metter beat us here. Mm -hmm. um, really good baseball team. Uh, they're, they're still sitting in number one in the region. And, um, you know, anytime there's a team that's sitting number one in the region and hadn't been beat, it's a, it's a challenge to, you know, can we be the ones to to knock them to off. knock them off? Yeah. And um, you know, when we played them here, we played them. We were up four to nothing through four innings, and um, then their bats really came alive. And w defensively, we played real good against them. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't have I think we had one error, but um, they beat us hitting the baseball. So that'll be a that'll be another big challenge the week after spring break is is the first game coming back going to Metter. Um, so just a, you know, another, another big week that, that, you know, you have to talk to these kids and, and work with these kids and try to keep them focused on the, uh, the task at hand and take one game at the time and see what happens. But I think, um, you know, I think they're, I think they're ready. I think they're ready mm -hmm. for the next two weeks and I hope I'm right. Uh, yeah. but we'll see. They're, um. They're fired up right now, and they're fired up right now and ready to go. All right. Well, I know uh, if uh, if last night doesn't get them fired up about the rest of what's coming up, there ain't much that I agree. could could happen because uh, I think you saw a bunch of kids uh, come together uh, a as a team. Uh, I believe so. And uh, it was great to see. Uh, you know, yeah, the win was great, but also seeing how they won, that right. uh, they did not at any point during their, that game get down on themselves, no. get down on each other. Uh, they were picking each other up throughout the entire game. Uh, they and, did that. You know, it's great to see. Yep, sure uh, is. Well, folks, you've got plenty of chances coming up the next couple of weeks to Take a look at the East Lawrence High School baseball team. Two games tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, excuse me, two games next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then they uh, take a road trip. Uh, but at least one of those, those games at Trueland going to be pretty close, not that far down the road at Soberton. So you'll have plenty of opportunities to catch the East Lawrence Falcons in action. Uh, please support these kids. It means a lot to them. And as always, go Falcons. Falcons.